Socially fluent people Reddit, what are some mistakes you see socially awkward people making? It doesn't matter how funny it was earlier that day when you saw it. Don't force someone to watch a 4-minute YouTube clip on the spot. Don't overcommit. Be casual. If no one reacts to your witty comment, drop it. If your advice is falling on deaf ears, drop it. Just roll with the punches yo. The harder you try, the easier it is for someone to tell that you are trying hard. Relaxed conversation is inviting and attractive for most people. Oh yeah? And no one owes you anything. They are all as focused on themselves as you are. Being independent and moving forward past anything helps. Edit. Obligatory. Whoa didn't expect this to blow up? Thanks for the silvers. Etc. I would say more but I am just too casual to care. Not reading when people are ready to go. If they are inching away. Heading towards the exit. They are just trying to be polite and stay engaged in the conversation. But want. Need to head out. Edit. People keep replying that the ones backing away are the socially inept ones. Part of being socially dysfunctional is to be unable to distinguish non-verbal communication. If your host is shutting off lights and edging people towards the door, they are politely conveying a message. They shouldn't have to resort to telling people to GTFO. Even nicely, it's etiquette 101. Don't explain the plots of books, movies or dreams in anything longer than three sentences. Not reading people about how much personal space they need. If I've moved away from you more than twice, back the fluff up and give me a bit more room this year. I see a lot of socially awkward people that are so preoccupied with trying to find a way to continue the conversation that they fail to either listen to the person while they're talking or they miss an obvious opportunity to continue the conversation. Ask questions rather than give the input about your own life. Someone starts talking about their dog? Ask some questions. Don't automatically go into a tirade about your dog. Letting someone else do the talking means you have to talk less. And questions make you more attentive. Many people find complaining and pointing out negative things as the easiest methods of conversation. But it's not a great way to make a good impression or connect with people. You'll just be seen as a walking buzzkill. Over explaining everything they say. Like they're worried everything will be taken the wrong way. So they keep explaining things ad nauseamus. You're also continuing the conversation after someone has said they need to leave. You may just be really interested in the conversation. But this makes it look like you don't respect the other person's time. Edit. Wow, I did not expect so many responses. I'll try to answer a couple of questions here instead of responding to every comment on over explaining and why it's a problem. The first thing it does is make the speaker seem insecure in what they have to say. If you have to add qualifiers or explain in excessive detail, it seems like you lack confidence. The second thing it does is signal to the listener that you may be arrogant and care more about talking than listening and that you may think the listener is stupid if they need you to explain so much. A better way to handle this is to say what you have to say concisely and then watch the other person. Do they seem confused? Or maybe they will ask for clarification and then you can explain in more detail. This also prevents the conversation from becoming one-sided on continuing a conversation after someone has said they need to leave. This varies by region, culture, and personality. If someone says, I have to go, and then keeps talking, that's on theme as your families do this all the time. But no one is keeping them there. What I was talking about is a situation that happens to me sometimes where I'll say, I have to go home, or I have to meet someone, or some variation. Usually with, I'll talk to you later, somewhere. This is my way of saying, I'm leaving now. Then I will head for the door. The other person will follow me and keep talking. Not the, okay, we should hang out again, sort of conversation. But continuing the previous topic or sometimes a new topic with no sign of wrapping up. We get to the door. I put my hand on the door to signal I'm leaving. Hoping body language will clue them in. They keep talking. When I get the chance. 
I say again, I really have to go. We can talk later, next week, etc. They keep talking. I walk out the door. They follow me to my car and continue talking. I open my car door. They keep talking. I sit in the driver's seat. They keep talking. Eventually, I start my car and close the door. But then I feel like the rude person because I cut them off even though I said multiple times that I had to go. In one sense, I'm flattered people want to talk to me so much. But on the flip side, it really bothers me when people don't respect my time in this way. I do enjoy long conversations with friends as one person described. But when I say, I have to go, I mean exactly that. I own and operate a small video game store. Many, many times I witness awkward, or worse, conversations between customers and will normally watch from afar to make sure everyone involved is comfortable. Two things I see on a daily basis. Point one. A socially be challenged customer strikes up an intense conversation with a normal customer. The normal customer might make a comment about a game or series and almost immediately the other very enthusiastically and aggressively will begin gushing over the subject. Most of the time, the normal customer will nod their head in agreement and their words will get more and more quiet and detached as they slowly make more space between the talker. This is where I normally step in and give the listener some breathing room as you're too. Two socially challenged folks start to enthusiastically and loudly begin to discuss a shared interest many times this becomes a pissing contest about who knows more information these conversations either end in lifelong friendships or bitter rivalries it's like watching two people shoot roman candles at each other at close range there are many other scenarios i get to see every day but these are the most popular i am very happy when people form friendships at my shop I wouldn't say I'm the most socially graceful person in the world. But for people who are more awkward than me, caring too much about minor flubs, even the most socially graceful person in the world will do something embarrassing or awkward every so often. We'll trip over our own feet. Say, gruel, when we meant to say, great, or, cool, accidentally say something insulting when we meant it as a compliment, etc etc, etc. Socially fluent, people will brush it off to the point where half the time no one knows it happened at all. Socially awkward people will try to overcorrect and end up drawing more attention to the situation and dragging it out for a long time. I read somewhere that in radio, if the announcer mispronounces a word, 10% of people notice, unless the announcer corrects themselves then 50% notice, if they mispronounce their correction, 90% notice, I have zero idea if these statistics are true, but the comparison stands, if you do something weird or dumb, and no one calls you on it, don't acknowledge that you did anything weird or dumb at all, if you absolutely must draw attention to your flaws, keep it incredibly brief. It's not awkward to be around the person who said, gruel, it's super awkward to be around the person who said, gruel, then explained themselves and apologized and said, OMG I'm so awkward, for 60 seconds afterwards. Some people will talk about themselves and nothing else. The trick is to get other people to do that. Forcing a joker trying too hard to be funny. I find certain socially awkward people repeat jokes they heard or try way too hard when it's not relevant to the conversation. I just find some socially awkward people try too hard to be liked in. Sometimes come off too strong. Don't highlight your flaws. If you make a mistake, say something awkward or just have a bad sit. Don't draw everyone's attention to it. They probably didn't notice. This is a socially graceless thing even confident extroverts often don't get. If somebody is hovering around your group at a party, notice it. Don't pretend they're not, and don't ignore it, and don't let them keep standing there waiting for somebody to let them in. Help that person. Make space for them and say, Hey, I'm, name, and you? They'll say their name. Then you go, we were just talking about, topic, 
and make a point to include theme as year when I see a group where everybody ignores the person who clearly wants to join. I judge the social skills of the people doing the ignoring. All truly excellent gatherings include at least one person who goes around making sure nobody is lonely or scared, and then greasing the social wheels for anyone who is. Obviously some people don't want to join in, and that's fine, but I'm not talking about theme this year.